welcome back student now today we'll discuss on lithium bromide absorption diffraction system and in the previous lecture video we already discussed on that domestic electrolux refrigerator the construction features of this of the system the working principle applications advantage and doing a numerical on this topic on that topic actually now today we'll discuss on lithium bromide absorption refraction system so basically it is a vr system first of all both lithium bromide and domestic electrolux so both are vr cycle okay but in case of uh, as we discussed in the previous lecture video that in case of domestic electrolux refrigerator is a vr cycle but there is no as such pump or moving parts are there as no use because so that it cannot produce any noise okay so this is the basic objective on the previous lecture video now in this lecture video that lithium bromide absorption refraction system that names suggest that lithium bromide so lithium bromide in this system it's act as a absorbent okay and refrigerant used is basically water so in lithium bromide absorbent refraction system lithium bromide is act as a absorbent and water is act as a refrigerant okay now this is the uh, block diagram of this system in which you can uh, first of all you observe all these things so what you see here that there are two cylindrical cell right two two cell actually okay in this two cell okay and one more thing that that uh, is basically as lithium bromide is act as a absorbent and it is basically a uh, corrosive in nature or it's a corrosive in nature so it is as a corrosive in nature as a lithium bromide so when it flows or when it, in, when it works actually uh, they will affect the various metal parts of this system when you uh, when, suppose this is the absorbent okay lithium bromide when it goes through the different channels through a particular a device so obviously they are basically made of either metal parts or any other type of material so they they, they can uh, affect the uh, different types of uh, corrosive effect they will be seen now to reduce or to minimize this type of corrosion effective uh, corrosion effective we will uh, basically use lithium chromite lithium chromite we generally used and in this lithium chromite um, actually used because of to reduce this uh, corrosive in nature uh, corrosive uh, corrosion effective in metal parts various metal parts okay so that's why and one more thing that uh, water is act as a refrigerant right water act as a refrigerant and lithium bromide act as a absorbent fine why because because uh, as you know that lithium bromide is basically strong affinity lithium bromide has a strong affinity of water vapor water vapor is nothing but is the vapor formation of basically water is is a vapor state of water that water is act as a refrigerant so lithium bromide has lithium bromide has a strong affinity of water vapor so that's why it can easily absorb so that's why it easily absorb that's why lithium bromide act as absorbent whereas water act as a refrigerant in this system fine now what is application application is basically where the temperature is uh, required for greater than degree, uh, 0 degree celsius or uh, you can say that uh, uh, greater than 4 degree celsius also it can basically used for chilling water like fruit juice preserve like uh, different types of uh, in case of air conditioning system you can use lithium bromide absorbent refrigeration system so these are the usage but now uh, construction features of the system third part construction features construction features in this construction features what you see that there are two pr pressure site one is low pressure site another is high pressure site so this is a low pressure site 
this is a high pressure site okay these are two cylindrical cell what you see here two cylindrical cell low pressure site and high pressure site in the low pressure site two uh, refrigerant equipment are there one is evaporator and is absorber in the here and in case of low pressure site condenser and this is called generator in this section chain generator are there are present so basically in case there are in case of there are two first of all two cylindrical cell are there in two cylindrical cell one is low pressure site one is high pressure site in low pressure site as you know basically in evaporator the pressure is very much low compared to the condenser or evapor condenser or generator part so in case of low pressure site one is evaporator absorber and in case of high pressure site one condenser and in another part one generator are used okay now in this channel you can see that number of tubes number of tubes in case of evaporator so these are there are various types of tubes or coil you can see here so first of all if you uh, observe in the evaporator there are one one coil are there basically chilled water tube actually here so this is a, in this coil in this tube actually high temperature water is coming from the source and uh, after cooling effect after refrigeration after evaporation that uh, low temperature chilled water are gone through the from the outside so this is a chilled water tube that takes within the uh, evaporator now uh, in the condenser so basically this is basically condenser okay so this is a condenser and this is basically absorber right so in the absorber and condenser both in this case cooling water tube so this is the cooling water tube okay this is a cooling water tube and in case of generator this is a heating coil so up to this two cylindrical cell in which low pressure site in low pressure site evaporator absorber are present in high pressure site condenser and generator are present okay in case of number of tubes in case of uh, evaporator that one chilled water tube are here okay and in case of uh, in case of uh, absorber and condenser okay in case of condenser and absorber cooling water tube are there and in case of generator one heating coil are present okay now uh, so what you see that uh, so these are the first uh, different parts so these are two cylindrical cell these are the coil so this is a heating coil this is a chilled water tube this is a cooling water tube this is also cooling water tube right now this is the basically cooling water pump this is a cooling water pump this is a solution pump this is refrigeration pump this is a heat exchanger okay so these are the defined parts that constitute a system right now what is the working principle of lithium bromide absorption refrigeration system or what is the flow diagram or what is the flow chart of this system now we'll discuss on it now as you know that uh, in the evaporator actually we know that water act as a refrigerant fine in the evaporator when water act as a refrigerant so this is basically water because this is a part of evaporator so in the evaporator this is a water refrigerant are here so water refrigerant through refrigerant pump it goes to the spray header so this is the spray header portion through spray in spray header through spray nozzle it will spray water will be sprayed through this spray nozzle right now this is the chilled water tube in this chilled water tube the high temperature water comes out from the basically it takes if it is the inlet portion of the high temperature water and this is a water tube and it takes out from the low temperature water okay so this is the chilled water chilled tube section okay now when it will spread okay water will be spread so when it will contact with the high temperature water high temperature water the water refrigerant will evaporate and it forms water vapor and this system evaporator absorber system in the low pressure site it uh, forms as such that water vapor just is transform or water will take part into the absorber so water vapor will go to the absorber through this channel right 
now it will mixed up with so this is the lithium bromide so lithium it will be mixed up with the lithium bromide okay and this is the absorber so absorber in the absorber so liquid water is absorber in the liquid water will be spread okay so when liquid water spread it will mixed up and when it will, when it will mixed up with the lithium bromide solution so this is the lithium bromide because as we know that in the absorbent as a act as a lithium bromide so lithium bromide when mixed up with the water vapor so so it will form a weak solution and through solution pump it goes through the through heat exchanger so this is a weak lithium bromide solution it goes to the generator in which the heating coil are there so this when it will go to the weak lithium bromide solution that means not only lithium bromide it will mixed up with some water vapor with lithium bromide which will spread in the no generator it is a basically heating coil that means when it heating heated the lithium bromide will be separated with water vapor and this water vapor goes to the condenser portions right when you will when you touch with the condenser tube or condenser section that will be condensed and it will form water now here the it will be left when the water vapor is rejected from the lithium bromide solution when it will evaporate there are only strong solution strong lithium bromide solution now this strong lithium bromide solution goes to the heat through the heat exchanger to the absorber through which lithium bromide is spread to the normal cooling water where cool from the cooling water so basically when it when because strong lithium bromide solution it reach to the heat exchanger and it is a weak solution so there are some heat exchange between weak solution to strong solution right so basically from strong solution to weak solution there some heat will be transferred so that there are less amount of heat is used for the heating purposes so that it can separate easily from lithium bromide from water so there are some acceleration or some efficiency to improve so that now there's a water pump this is a normal water or cooling pond you can see this is a cooling water pump through which the water normal cooling water goes to the absorber and this is the cooling water from cooling pond after absorber it goes to the condenser this is the cooling water outlet so in this position after condensate normal water are placed here normal means water okay now this condensate water or refrigerant water is a some pressure reducing valves here pressure reducing valve are here so that it can reduce pressure when it when the uh, water is flows from high is from condenser to evaporator means high pressure to high pressure side to low pressure side the pressure should be reduced so that here when water or condensed and refrigerant water when flow from high pressure side to low pressure side it will condense when it will condense there are some pressure reducing valve here so that it can reduce pressure and that goes to the in this portion in which water will uh, add in this section as a refrigerant so that it will uh, it will uh, maintain the minimum level of refrigerant so that it can continuous operate the system okay so this is the working principle of lithium bromide absorption refrigeration system okay now uh, let's take a numerical on this topic okay now uh, numerical so this is the numerical on this topic so the following data uh, referred to a lithium bromide water absorbent refrigeration this is the defined condition of refrigeration system of lithium bromide is given that the generator temperature is given condenser temperature also given just go through it uh, and absorber temperature is given evaporator temperature is given so all the temperature of the different constituent of uh, different system of th this system is given now condenser temperature also given and the uh, the condition the steam enters the generator heating coil at temperature is given that is 120 degrees centigrade and the state is given the dry saturated state steam and when it leaves it the temperature is given as condensate water basically the temperature is 100 degrees centigrade and the given is that the and one more thing the concentration of the concentration of liquid 
leaving the absorber that is also given that is 0 0.51 and uh, its enthalpy is minus 170 kilojoule per kg also given and the enthalpy of vapor leaving the generator also given the flow rate of the mass evaporator is also given now you have to find the pressure you have to find the pressure in generator in tonnage or cooling capacity in heat rejection condensation heat rejection to the condenser and absorbent ratio now so the value first of all generator temperature is designated to tg that is 80 degrees centigrade just convert into kelvin similarly temperature of condenser or absorber is also given that is our atmospheric temperature that is 30 degrees celsius that you convert into 303 kelvin now evaporator temperature is given that 283 kelvin the t2 basically 25 degrees celsius that means condenser temperature is given that is 25 degrees celsius basically when the condenser water is cowlet okay and th basically that is 120 degrees centigrade that means heating coil temperature is given that is heating coil temperature 120 degrees celsius and when temper the liquid leaving the temperature that is 100 degrees centigrade right and one more thing that uh, x pipe is 0 0.6 pang means the con the concentration of liquid leaving the generator is designated with x5 because as you know that uh, this is the diagram as you can see that this is the diagram of one two three four portion as the leaving of in the numerical the, it is given that just that the liquid of leaving the generator the liquid of leaving the generator so this is the generator portion so the generator portion when the liquid leaving the generator that means this portion that means the concentration of liquid water that is 0 0.65 that's why it is 0 0.765 that is the drainage fraction factor and that corresponding value enthalpy is also given h5 and one more thing the concentration and of liquid and then the concentration of, of liquid leaving the absorber that so the where it is absorber so this is absorber when it is leaving that means when it is leaving that means four state so corresponding to four state the value of x4 is given that is 0 0.51 that corresponding enthalpy of value is given 170 kilojoule per kg right now and the enthalpy of vapor leaving the generator the enthalpy of vapor leaving the generator that is enthalpy of leaving the generator that is h1 okay the enthalpy of vapor because uh, when it will evaporate when the heating coil is coming out this section is basically in the vapor state right so vapor state the enthalpy is 2620 kelvin that's why h1 so one point here so that's why indicates h1 2620 kilojoule kelvin and kilojoule per kg and here m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m3 is equal to 0 0.4 kg per second is also given that means the flow rate through the evaporator uh, flow rate through the evaporator so this is the evaporator part okay so this is the evaporator part so m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m3 is also is equal to 0 0.4 kg per second is given now you have to calculate the pressure in generator different in different section you have to calculate the pressure okay and tonnage or cooling capacity and uh, heat rejection to the condensation absorbent and cop okay now let's move to the numerical uh, to solve in the numerical now as in the numerical it is given that the, when you calculate the pressure okay first of all in the first portion first portion of the numerical you have to calculate the pressure in the generator when you calculate the pressure in the generator when you want to calculate uh, first of all you have to use your steam table so please go through the steam table and uh, according to my direction please go through this uh, so first go through the steam table of dry saturated steam and the generator temperature is given 80 degrees centigrade just go to the saturated steam and water table temperature table in which the temperature corresponding 80 degrees centigrade the pressure is given that that temperature that pressure is basically saturated paper that pressure basically given as your steam table that will be 0 0.4736 bar that will be the pressure okay now corresponding to the bar two you have to convert into millimeter of hg because in numerical it is uh, it is asked that it is tell you that that you have to convert the pressure you have to uh, convert the pressure into millimeter of hg so uh, it is given 0 0.36 bar where do you calculate from your corresponding saturated steam and water table temperature scale go to the 80 degree centigrade that corresponding 
pressure that gives you the pressure of generator okay pressure in the generator not pressure of generator pressure in the generator right that will be just when you convert into bar to millimeter millimeter of hg that will be 355.3 millimeter of hg right similarly when you calculate the pressure in the condenser so the condenser temperature is given as just go to the numerical condenser temperature is 30 degree centigrade so corresponding 30 degree centigrade again go to the saturated steam and water table in the temperature scale and corresponding 30 degree centigrade temperature uh, that pressure is given at uh, that place that is the base pressure that condenser pressure you just convert into millimeter of hg okay now at 10 degree celsius PE that is basically 0 0.01227 but similarly similar fashion you can calculate for evaporator pressure and similarly you can calculate the absorber pressure okay from steam table just uh, you just go to the st steam table in your uh, syllabus steam table corresponding temperature go to the press saturated pressure scale in your steam table you go through it you can go on through it you can you will do it okay now uh, second second part is that what is the tonnage or cooling capacity tonnage or cooling capacity a, it is basically uh, cooling capacity as you know that cooling effect or refrigerant effect basically done in the evaporator so when you calculate the tonnage or cooling capacity cooling effect that means what an amount of heat reject what are the heat I reject that you have to calculate okay from the evaporator so that is basically qe and from the steam table corresponding to as you know that evaporator temperature evaporator temperature as you know that given as basically uh, uh, sorry so basically uh, as corresponding to from steam table corresponding to 25 degrees celsius enthalpy of liquid water that is basically h2 okay so basically basically this state basically given as two state the temperature of two state is given as uh, 25 degrees celsius in your numerical so corresponding 25 degrees celsius and this state basically liquid state so at uh, again you go to the steam table at 25 degrees celsius of liquid water enthalpy that that will be your h2 that is basically 104.75 kilojoule per kg from your steam table now again go to the steam table because of as you know that when it leaves the evaporator that state is basically three right the, so that state is basically three so at 10 degrees celsius the evaporator basically release so leaving the leaving the uh, at 10 degrees celsius so corresponding 10 degrees celsius uh, when it will release the evaporator that basically state will be at vapor state so um, so s3 basically your hg basically corresponding 10 degrees celsius will be 25.9.9 kg per kilojoule per kg because of this h2 and hc is required for as you know that what amount of uh, tonnage or what amount of cooling capacity is required uh, complete so you have to calculate qv as you know that qv is equal to mc into delta t or cp is in terms of if you write down hc minus h2 okay and you know that m2 because m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m3 is equal to 0 0.4 it is given so put this value s in h2 you will get uh, 276 ton refrigeration because of uh, basically 3966 kilojoule per second you just convert into ton of refrigeration by dividing 3.5 because you know that one ton of refrigeration is equal to 3.5 kilojoule per second okay now and the third part is that heat rejection to the condenser and absorber heat rejection to the condenser and absorber that is basically amount of heat uh, reject so qc so uh, where it is a condenser uh, first of all condenser okay so condenser is here so condenser basically one and two in between one two you have to know the, about h2 and h1 and m1 okay because you know that m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m3 so value 1 m1 m2 m3 you know that and when you calculate the heat rejection from the condenser that formula will be m2 or m1 into h2 minus h1 so you know that value of h1 and h2 and put this value h1 is 2620 uh, and uh, h2 is equal to 104.7 so that will be 1006 kilojoule per second now as well as when you calculate the heat rejection of absorber so this is your absorber part wait when you calculate the heat rejection of the absorber you know because m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m3 is equal to you know that uh, that is 0 0.4 kilojoule per kg uh, sorry kg per second now 
when you calculate the heat ejection through the absorber you don't know the value of m6 m5 or m4 so you have to calculate on first uh, because then you know that q uh, because uh, qa is equal to ma into something uh, means enthalpy difference so you don't know the value of ma so first of all you have to calculate the ma or you can say the, in terms of ma uh, you have to you have to calculate first m4 okay then so as you know that uh, in the in this diagram in this block diagram you know that uh, because so this is the absorber part so you know that in this flow diagram so two entry point are there three and five this is the four this is that exit point so m3 plus m5 is equal to m4 no problem so m3 plus m5 is equal to m4 and uh, considering the mass balance for lithium bromide solution in the absorber so uh, because of as you know that uh, uh, because from the generator so this basically it comes to the strong solution of lithium bromide so that m4 into x4 that will be equal to the m5 into x5 right so considering this uh, so m4 by m5 is equal to x5 by x4 the value of x5 and x4 is given because x5 value is uh, given as 0 0.65 i think so right mm, just a minute uh, Sorry, 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 right. So 0.65 and 0.5 on. So 0 0.65 due to 0 0.5 on that will give you that 1.275. So M4 is equal to 1.275 into M5. So M4, as you know, that M4 is equal to uh, M3 plus M5. So from this equation, so M3 is equal to M3 plus M5. And M4, you can uh, write down 1.27545 here is equal to M3 plus M5. And you know that M1 is equal to M2 is equal to M3 is equal to 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 here, so M5 is equal to 1.4572, okay? So here, when you put this value M3 and M5, you can calculate the value of M4 here. Now, considering the energy balance for absorber. As you know, that is the energy balance equation. Uh, so this is uh, energy balance equation. It will help a lot, I think, right? So as you know, that is the in entry point A3 and 5. So that will be M3 into H3 plus M5 plus H5 is equal to so this is the exit so that will be equal to the m4 into h4 sorry plus qa this is the absorber this is the outside so the plus qa so this is the final expression thus write down this equation and put these values here in terms of m3 sc m5 h5 m4 h4 you only know all these values you don't know the value of what amount of heat reject from the qa so value of qa will be coming out 1214.36 kilojoule per second after calculating all this value now in the last part you have to calculate the COP. COP means uh, the QE by QG as you know that uh, QE by QG as denoted as COP and you know that the value of QE already you have calculated that value of QE basically 966 kilojoule per second right in the first part of the numerical when you calculate the tonnage or cooling capacity that means 966 kilojoule per second so you just uh, put this value as 966 but you don't know the value of QG again just considering the just considering energy balance for absorber uh, again because this is the generator portion now this is the generator so this is the generator what you see here that m1 h1 okay m1 h1 plus so this is the exit m1 h1 plus m5 h5 that equal to that is the nt m4 h4 plus qg right so this is the energy balance equation so this equation so put all these values m1 h1 m5 h5 m4 h4 you can get this value qg here so cop is basically qe by qg so it will like 0 0.77 now the last portion is relative cop so this is the last portion you just uh, try yourself then if you don't uh, uh, do this then we will discuss in the next lecture video okay in the next lecture video in the we will discuss on some air conditioning part some ventilation part okay we'll discuss on ventilator or uh, and duct design also okay okay thank you very much for listening and watching me goodbye